I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Trustee Cabrera? Present. Trustee Sweets? Present. Trustee Rogers? Present. Mayor Yukich? Present. Trustee Nice Turkey? Present. Trustee Barry? Present. Are there any uh, amendments to the agenda? Okay, uh, we need a motion for approving the minutes. Let's see, we've got three different ones we're going to be doing. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of December 14th, 2016 Village Board meeting? Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the December 14th, 2016 Village Board meeting? So moved. Trustee Rogers? No second. Second, Trustee Petrio. Any discussion? Can I just add something? Um, can we just add my comments that were also made to the minutes? Sure, I can review the tape and email you. Perfect, thank you. Okay, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the December 19th, 2016 Special Village Board meeting? I so move. Trustee Sweets. I second. Trustee Gabriel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of January 11th, 2017 Village Board meeting? I so move. Trustee Gabriel. I'll second. Second by Trustee Sweets. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? I'm going to abstain. That was not first. Motion carries. Uh, schedule of accounts payable. Is there a motion to approve the accounts payable for the period of December 16, 2016 through January 26, 2017? Aye. So moved. Trustee Sweets. Second. Trustee Caprio, any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweets? Aye. Trustee Nice Aye. Trustee Barry? Aye. Motion carries. <clears throat> Next is reports and communications from the mayor and other officers. Uh, under one, plan commission opening. The village is currently seeking letters of interest for a vacancy on a planning commission. Residents interested in serving on a planning commission must submit letters of interest along with a resume addressed to Mayor Yukich, or please call the Village Hall at 708-301-0632 with any questions. Second, notice for subdivision ordinance update. The Village is requesting proposals from qualified consultants for professional services and the revision of the subdivision regulations. The purpose of this project is to review the requirements and standards regulating subdivisions, planning of land within the corporate limits, plan approval jurisdiction of the village, identifying deficiencies and describing procedural steps and standards of the regulations, clearly consistent with the village goals. Solicitation documents may be obtained on the Open Bids RFP section of our website at www.homerglen.org. All proposal must be received no later than 4 p.m. Central Standard Time on February, Friday, 17th, 2017, as described in the RFP. Okay. RFP Spring Tree Planning Program. The village is seeking bids for the 2017 Spring and Fall Public Parkway Tree Planning Program. The request for proposals can be found on the village website. Within the next two weeks, residents who have had a tree removed from their parkway in the past year will receive a letter offering a choice of trees for their parkway. And last for me is discover your unclaimed property. Uh, as a reminder, the Illinois State's Treasurer Office is safeguarding more than $2 billion in unclaimed property belonging to millions of Illinois residents. Visitors can stop by the Village Hall at 14240 West 151st Street on Friday, February 3rd 
from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. to check and see if they have any unclaimed property. And for more information, please contact the Village Hall, 708-301-0632, or visit www.homerglen.org. Uh, we'll start with Trustee, Mr. Trustee Perry. No report this evening, Larry. Thank you. <laughs> um, just a reminder, if anyone is using the parks or the trails and they're walking their pups, just please remember to pick up after them. The village is receiving a lot of um, phone calls regarding this matter. Um, and an update, um, PRI is in the process of cost estimates and various, uh, for the various concepts and phases of our heritage park. That's it. Thank you. Trustee Rivers. Yeah. Thank you. Trustee Suisse. Thank you, Mayor. Reporting for the Environment Committee. We are seeking volunteers and vendors for the village's Earth Day Arbor Day event, which is taking place on May 20th at Kono's Farm. Various levels of sponsorships are also available. We are still collecting broken strands of holiday lights for recycling through the end of January. There's a box in the village lobby. <coughs> There's a box in the village lobby for drop-offs. And uh, the Environment Committee is working on two future dates for the village's stargazing event. We are also looking into the possibility of hosting this event here in Heritage Park. That concludes my report. <coughs> Thank you, Trustee Sweet. Trustee Kathy. Uh, just reporting on behalf of the Parade and Festival Committee, we are having a fest this year, uh, June 22nd through the 25th. Uh, was it 5th or 6th? One of those two. 5th. Um, and a governmental agreement's been completely authorized, so we have started the process of getting all the entertainment and other activities arranged, and we look forward to seeing you there this year, and I'll report more as we learn more. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Gabriel. Uh, Treasurer, John. Thank you, Mayor. I have the uh, Treasurer's Report of Cash and Investments at December 31st, 2016. It is the eighth month of fiscal uh, 17. It shows the general fund with a balance of $5,386,177.19. The special events funds has a cash and investment balance of $71,238.07. The environment fund had a balance of $72,506.49. The motor fuel tax fund had a balance of $3,374,983.42. Park and Recreation Fund had a balance of $2,670,375.16. The Debt Service Fund had a cash and investment balance of $1,109,684.95. And the Capital Project Fund had a balance of $1,026,000. $991.47. The EAB Tree Replacement Fund had a balance of $421,144.02. And the last fund, the Capital Project Bond Fund, had a balance of $15,057,423 for a grand total at December 31st, $29,190,801. And that concludes my report. Thank you, gentlemen. Any questions? Okay. Uh, village clerk. Oh, sorry. Um, as the mayor knows, we had about 540 business registrations being prepared this past month, and we are almost completed with that process. Um, about 300 commercial businesses, a little over 240 home businesses. And hopefully that process will be done um, within the next month or so. That's uh, Village attorney, no report, Your Honor. Thank you. Public safety officials, no report. Mr. DeVivo, I'll be brief. <clears throat> Mayor, Patrice, staff, I'm proud to say we have been recognized, we, meaning the village, and the township of over Township have been recognized by the state of Illinois. Um, Evelyn Sang Gwetti, is that how you say the lieutenant governor's name? She's on a project, she's putting out a guide um, for the rest of the state, um, telling, uh, uh, showing examples of how when local government works together, how good it is for the community. Uh, the guide is called um, the Mouthful. The Illinois Local Government Shared Services Best Practices Guide. Uh, this is something that they'll be releasing pretty soon. 
Um, I, I got involved, they just sent me an email asking if I could give some examples, and of course I, I typed away on the form, sent it in, and called them and said, I think we're the poster child for that. I think we really do quite well working together and serving the community. I had heard nothing about it until we got a phone call the other day um, saying that there's 27 examples in the guide and we are one of them. Uh, they gave me another opportunity to put some quotes in there. Uh, I immediately came and started working with staff thinking it was something we could work on together that best represents both communities. <coughs> they plan on doing a press release next week. We should have a quote ready for that press release. And then they're going to be taking this on the road and giving um, some seminars on this and they've asked us to go and uh, represent our community and, uh, and perhaps speak at these engagements. And I, uh, I invited the mayor to come with me. And if it's possible, that's what we're going to do. So congratulations to us. All our hard work has paid off. We are now a shining example for the rest of the state and have been recognized for it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Yes. 
will be raised now. It's really frustrating after years and years and it just gets worse and worse. I agree. Helps. We'll see. One forty three forty two. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, public comments over. Uh, next is legislation and action items. We have a proclamation commemorating Bokina Fire District. So, if the Chief could step up. Okay, is there a motion to approve the attached proclamation commemorating Bokina Fire District's 100 years of service? Trustee Space. A second. Trustee Caprio. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Berrien? Aye. Trustee Nesky Trudy? Aye. Congratulations. Thanks. Appreciate it. 100 years, you look pretty young. Well, I look that way. Well, thank you very much. Uh, okay. It's a proclamation to commemorate the Mokina Fire District's 100 years of service, whereas the Mokina Volunteer Fire Department, which was organized in 1917 with approximately 30 members who fought fires with very limited equipment, including 300 feet of three quarter inch hose mounted on a wooded, wooden hose cart pulled by the firefighters, six rubber buckets, two red flags, two red lights, and four white lights. And whereas in 1932, the Mokina Volunteer Fire Department was formally recognized and equipped with a Model AA Ford chassis and a Model AA fire engine complete with chemical extinguishers and a pump to fight fires. And whereas the 1962 election resulted in the creation of the Mokina Fire Protection District funded by taxation and whereas today the district employs 34 full-time firefighters, paramedics, two full-time administration assistants and one paid on call firefighter, altogether servicing 17,500 people, over 12 and a half square miles compromised or comprised with portions of Homer Glen, Mokina, Orland Park, and Frankfurt. They're serviced by the Mokina Fire Protection District. And whereas the Mokina Fire Protection District responds to 2,600 calls annually and is equipped with one ladder truck, three engines, one heavy rescue squad four advanced life support ambulances, and one brush truck. And whereas, Mokina Fire Protection District is, was awarded the accredited agency status in 2001, and as an internationally accredited agency is classified as a class one fire department by the Insurance Services Office, and whereas the district remains committed to the core values of professionalism, responsibility, integrity, devotion, and effectiveness pride and dedication and service to the residents of the village of Homer Glen and neighboring communities. <coughs> now therefore I, Mary George Jukic, do hereby proclaim the year 2017 as the official 100th anniversary of the Mokina Fire Protection District. All right, thank you very much. That was a lot of awareness. <laughs> One quick thing there, man. Uh, we, uh, we appreciate this very much. Uh, like I said, 2017 is our 100th anniversary. Our 100th anniversary. Um, we, uh, we are very proud to uh, protect portions of Homer Glen, and uh, we, can, we look forward to continuing our relationship with the uh, residents of Homer Glen as well as the village of Homer Glen. So thank, thank you very much. Sir. We appreciate it. Okay, is there a motion to authorize the mayor to sign a letter designating Chicago Southland Convention and Visitors Bureau as the Village of Homer Glen's Convention and Visitors Bureau Agency of Record? So moved. Trustee Caprio? Second. Trustee Burian, any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Nancy Turkey? Aye. Trustee Sweet? Aye. Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Burian? Aye. Trustee Caprio? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, 
Third, reduction of development guarantee Gooding into Grove phase two. Is there a motion to approve resolution number 17-002? A resolution approving the reduction of the development guarantee for the Goodings Grove phase two planning and development to the new development guarantee amount of $223,054.12. Trustee Reese and Trustee Trachey, is there any discussion? So the, the only pullback we have is for the road the, to finish the roadway, correct? Like two portions of it? Yeah, they still they still have work in the uh, Sheffield, I think, which surrounds the the, uh, the condo buildings. So they still have the final surface to do on that. Uh, there's also a uh, final surface that needs to be done on the northern section of Greystone. Um, they haven't done that yet. And then there's uh, probably a little bit of, uh, I think there's some sidewalk work and street lights and things of that nature. And what is the plans for that? Um, at this point, uh, the developer still needs to finish those. I believe he's, uh, I'm assuming he's waiting for uh, more build out in that area before he finishes the final surface on the roads. There's quite a few of the, uh, uh, I think, multifamily or townhome buildings that need to be constructed as well. So, so it's time to now just a uh, Well, in this section, what they did was is uh, the section of Greystone behind Menards or be, behind um, Home Depot and Myers, since that was being used uh, extensively by the public and that was part of this, the, a section of it was part of the, the phase two of uh, Goodings Grove. What they did is they made an agreement and worked with the highway department to get that section of it paved so that the Homer Township Highway Department in the village would be responsible for maintaining that portion, which the public is using quite quite extensively right now. Mm -hmm. So uh, they finished that portion, but there's still other portions that need to, to be finished. So what I'm saying is for, that needs to be finished. Is there a binder there? or is it Yes, there, there's binder, but there's no surface. And then what kind of condition is that binder in? It means that's so for years right now. Um, it, it varies. There is some patchwork that ultimately will need to be uh, probably done at, at the time that the surface is installed. Same with this area. There was patchwork that was required for this area, so uh, patching was done and then the final surface in this section was done. Yeah, my, I guess my concern is, you know, he doesn't have any, there's no, nothing on the calendar to finish it. And I understand that because you don't want to bring the heavy equipment in on new asphalt if you're going to do all this construction, but the condition of the binder over there and I, I don't know the exact area of it, so I'm just gonna say in general that site is um, it's it's pretty rough. So what are what are we doing to enforce them to even just keep up on that binder? If well, there, there's not a whole lot they can do other than patching. Um, when they do the final surface on those areas, anything any binder that is not in conformance with the standards and specifications will have to be removed or replaced whether that be patching or full removal and replacement. But until that time, see, what my concern is the condition of what that road is like now. Mm -hmm. And what can we do to get them to, to fix it? And I, I, I can't say, well, we're going to wait until they put down the final course because we don't know when that's going to be. No, we're still following through if, if there's call to attention or something. But is this, in, is this enough money, I guess is what I'm saying, is this hold back because if he's has to patch the binder mm -hmm. and we're just doing hold back for that final lift, is this enough money that will hold him back, I guess? This should be sufficient. What we've what we've uh, been working with, uh, we, we've, we've contacted the developer as far as trying to get the rest of it finished in this subdivision as well as the Goodings Grove uh, 4. Um, so we're going to be working with the developer hopefully this year to see if they are able to finish those roads and get those turned over to us so that we can maintain them so that everything, you know, ultimately then the letter of credits will be ultimately removed. So, but we want to make sure that, you know, the roads are in good condition. Thank you. I have a question. Is any extension, are they going to be responsible for an extension into the Goodings Grove Park? Is that part of Greystone or any of those extensions? Ultimately, I think the plan is we'll have a temporary driveway to get access to the park. Um, the rest of that section is part of Goodings Grove 5 uh, that will go in front of the park. So ultimately, when Goodings Grove 5 is constructed, that section will be constructed as well. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Trustee Rogers? Aye. Trustee Sweezy? Aye. Trustee Vance Kajorki? Aye. Trustee Berrien? Aye. Trustee Kepper? Aye. Motion carries. 
Next would be old business. Is there any old business? Is there any new business? Uh, we had executive session. There's no need to go into it tonight. We're not quite ready for it. So I would need uh, a motion. Yeah, just a motion to move. Yes, so move. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Uh, meetings adjourned.